Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Today I want to cover the first item on this custom setting menu, the autofocus part. That is the first of these six uh, sub-menus that you see. The reason why I don't dive into all of these items here is because I think that would be a very long video, and also because there are some things that we need to talk about in order for these things here to make sense. And those three things are the focus mode, the area mode, the autofocus area mode, and the release mode. And if you are familiar with these terms, of course, feel free to skip forward in this video. I have made a table of content in the description below, so you should quickly be able to find the parts that are of interest to you. So introducing the focus system here on the Nikon D700, you can see we have 51 focus points and they sit centered. That's uh, perhaps showing the camera's age. And uh, you can move the focus point around here so that it selects one of these 51 as the prime focus point. You can see I can wrap around here that uh, if I go left, when I'm leftmost, then it will go to the rightmost uh, dot and, and so on and so forth. So very easy to move the focus point around like this. The autofocus system is controlled by three buttons that sits on your camera. One here on the front, one on the top, and one here bottom right. And I will take you through what all these three buttons are all about. On front of your camera there is a selector where you have three options. One is manual, where you have to do everything yourself. And then you have S and C. S for single servo and C for continuous servo. And the thinking is that for S for single, when you half press the shutter, then it will focus once and then it won't focus again. It will stay that way until either you release the shutter or you fully press the shutter and take the picture. So that is good if you want to focus and recompose perhaps without changing focus as you do so. Whereas the continuous is that the camera continuously, as the name says, tries to obtain focus, meaning that it will if your subject is moving, then you can hear that the focus motor is working constantly to, to change the, the focus so that the, the subject stays in focus. That's really useful for subjects that moves a lot. Next up is the autofocus area selector, and it gives you three options to choose from. The first one is called single point autofocus, and in that one you select the point. You can see I can move it around using the command wheel, and uh, yeah. That's the first option. The second option here is called dynamic area autofocus. And you can see if I want to move in and out of that, it adds some points around the focus point that you have selected. And the thinking is here that if the camera loses focus in the point that you have selected, you will try and look used to the points just surrounding the focus point to see if you get obtain focus with one of those. And you can, you can determine or set up the size of this uh, dynamic area. And I will show you that later when we get to the menu system. So that's the dynamic area. And then finally you have the auto, which is that the camera basically ignores that if you have selected a point, but it, it takes full control and uses whatever of the 51 points that it sees fit in order to obtain focus. And it will show you which points it's using to obtain focus when you have pressed the shutter. And uh, of course, if your subject is moving around a lot, the autofocus is a really, really good option to use. So in short, single point for things that are relatively stable, dynamic area if your things are moving, but not so much, and then auto if they are really, really <laughs> moving a lot around, like football players or whatever, something that's moving a lot. So that's the point with these three options here in your autofocus area mode. On the top of the camera here, you have a release mode selector, and uh, it can do a lot of different things, but I will just cover the first three options. That's single, continuous low, and continuous high. And the difference between single and continuous is that when you, when you hold down and keep holding down the shutter in continuous mode, the camera will continue to fire shots. In continuous high, it will be five shots per second. In continuous low, you can set it up, but of course, it will be a little bit less than five shots per second. And if you have the battery grip uh, mounted, then it will shoot, I believe, in the continuous high, it will go up to seven frames per second. So you can imagine that if you shoot both in continuous uh, focus and continuous release mode, then you're putting a lot of stress on the camera. It has to work really hard, both to obtain focus and to keep taking a lot of pictures. So there you have it, the release mode, the focus mode, the autofocus area mode, and the focus points. So with that, let's move into the menu system. So if we start with A1 here, you can see that the options are release and focus. 
and then there's the middle one here, release and focus. If you you mind you that the auto focus continues, that is when the camera continuously tries to focus on your subject. So you can tell it that it can actually be allowed to take the picture without being in focus, meaning that it prioritizes release. You can have it to take the picture in such a way that it will not sort of release the shutter until it has obtained focus. And then you have the compromise where it will to its best of abilities try to obtain focus, but it will also try to keep out the release frequency. So this is sort of the, the compromise between the two. So release, that is, you know, you can fire away without being in focus at all. Focus is that the you won't fire until you have obtained focus, and then the compromise here. In the single servo mode, you have the same options, almost. You have release and focus. Of course, you do not have the, the in-between because there's actually only one shot being fired here. So either you can allow the camera to release without being in focus, or you say, no way, Jose, I want you to obtain focus before the shutter is released. So that was the first two options. Dynamic autofocus area, that is the that is the tool with the size of the points. You may recall that we when I switched on the dynamic autofocus area, there were nine points. Here you can select up to 51 points, meaning the full plate. So maybe you notice that if I go out here in the menu system here and into right and I have to select dynamic focus area, you can see right now I had selected nine points. If I go into the menu system and says, oops, I would like to uh, select for the dynamic focus area, let's just take 21 points and go out again. Then you will see that all of a sudden, the instead of having nine points, it's much more now, it's 21. I can still move it around uh, like this, as you can see, but it's much more points now where it, it looks for focus uh, surrounding the focus point you have selected. If you take 51, then of course the plate is full. Let me just try and give that a, a, a test here. And now you can see here, I've taken the full plate and now it will actually look both here and all the surrounding points. And you can then ask yourself, what's the point with this? Because now it, uh, it looks at the full plate, what's the difference between this one and also? As I read the manner, it is that it starts trying to obtain focus where you have chosen the focus point to be, and then it works its way out from that point upwards. Whereas with auto, it starts basically anywhere. It gives equal priority to all 51 uh, focus points instead of starting or giving priority to the point you have selected. So that's how I see the difference. There also is a fourth item in the menu system, and that has to do with 51 points and 3D tracking. And what that means is that the camera can, based on, I think it is color and to some extent contrast, keep track of a subject that is moving within the frame. And that means that if you, for instance, have a tennis player that moves very predictably uh, within your frame from the left to the right, say, then that this function can actually keep track of that player. It sort of is as if it's glued on to the tennis player and uh, keeps tracking uh, the player moving from left to right, uh, for instance. And here you can see now I have my trusty assistant, the mad cow, uh, who I'm, is not moving, but I'm moving the camera and the effect, of course, is the same. But as you can see, the focus point that I illuminated, they show that it's the, actually the same point on the mad cow that is uh, in focus continuously. So this is... 3D tracking 51 points in dynamic autofocus area mode. Wow. Focus tracking will log on. It has to do with how long the camera will wait before it tries to find or regain focus. You have probably tried the situation where someone walks into your frame all of a sudden and then leaves the frame again. They walk past or whatever it is. And uh, in those cases, it can be a little bit annoying if the camera immediately tries to refocus. You want it to wait just a little bit until maybe people have left your frame again. And uh, this is where you can control how, how aggressive or how long time it waits. So as you can see here, I've selected normal, but you can actually, you can test this out, but you can, you can ask the, ca the camera to be more patient and, and too long, or you can be very aggressive, uh, take short or, or even off, then it will try to autofocus immediately. AF activation that has to do with whether both the shutter and the AF on button that sits top right here on your camera next to your command wheel, if both of these buttons should activate uh, focus or it should only be the AF on button. If you select AF only, 
then when you half press the shutter, then it won't focus. It will only focus when you push this button. This is also known as back button focus, and some absolutely love it. So this is where you set that up. Auto focus point illumination. You can of course switch this off and you can switch it on. And then you can select auto where only the points are illuminated if the subject is dark. I have the uh, auto, uh, but choose on if you want to see every time where the focus point have uh, been found. Focus point wrap around. This has to do with you may notice that here on the menu system, when I walked around with this focus point here, when I get to the top and press up, then it goes to the button and vice versa. And this is the wrap around function. So you can see that it, it actually walk around if I turn right all the time. It will do like this, like an, an old Pac-Man game. You can switch this ability on and off. So if you, if you can, yeah, you can select wrap and no wrap. I think that's self-explanatory. Auto focus point selection here. You can choose between 51 and 11. And the good question is, of course, why would you choose 11 and not 51? Why would you not want the max? The advantage of having only 11 points is you can jump around a bit quicker within the focus area. If 51 may be a little bit cumbersome or slow. So choose 11 if you want to jump a little bit faster and don't need the precision. But mind you, this is only relevant in manual mode. Many of the points above have been related to continuous autofocus. Uh, this one is only for manual focus. Built-in autofocus assist illuminator. That's a, <laughs> that's a long name. But basically on the, on the camera here, front right, you may have noticed there's a little light sitting that uh, can throw light, I think, up to three meters. And that will will uh, help the camera focus when you're shooting something that's that's close up. And uh, you can actually here select if you want to switch it on and off. And of course, it's subject to your, your own preference, but it helps in low light situations if you're shooting something that's relatively close. The last option here is for the MBD10. And you're thinking, what is that? That is actually the battery grip. You can buy a battery grip for the Nikon D700. And here the configuration simply relates to how you want to configure the buttons. I do not have the, uh, unfortunately, the battery grip, but in here is where you configure how the buttons are set up, just like you can configure the, the main camera. So that's the point with A10. So that was the autofocus part of the custom settings menu. I will come back with a video related to the other points here on the custom settings menu, but I just felt that the autofocus was because of all the related uh, things. It was a little bit of a big subject, so I wanted to cover this in this video. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.